All right, so I put my crankshaft in the freezer last night to kind of get it a little bit cooler. Um, I, I've seen people do it without doing that, but you know, uh, that's what I decided to do. I'm gonna put a little lubrication on here. Uh, this is some old stuff. I'm also gonna put some oil. Assembly lube. put bearing on I've already got them marked I already sat them in there with the dowel pins all that stuff um, so this is going to face down for your uh, dowel pin towards the flywheel all right so we got that on oh, my small hammer this is a little overkill So on this next step, kind of important, we're going to uh, put the crank gear on with the uh, notches pointed up. Make sure you have your tools ready. <laughs> Risky business there. Spacer. Turn that. All right, so now we got our spacer on there. Now I'm going to grab the brass gear. Looks good. All right, so after you're done with that portion, you're gonna put on the snap ring right here. Um, and make sure there's no rough edges. I accidentally scratched this right here a little bit. That's where the other bearing's gonna go. But obviously, you got your bearing, put it on first, then we're gonna heat this one, put it on, the spacer. Uh, it's tight fit. I could have maybe heated that a little bit too. It uh, would have been a little bit easier. And then your brass ring with snap ring. Now we're gonna unbolt the flywheel and uh, start putting the rod ends on. Alright, so I've got my uh, rod bearings installed. I cleaned them up uh, before I did that. Uh, now I'm going to clean up the crank just a little bit more. Uh, I've already done it, but I'm just going to do it again. Make sure and we'll start in installing the uh, rods. All right, so we're going to install some assembly lube. Um, normally just do oil, but it's probably a better idea to do this. Just saying. <coughs> so also to remember that this is, uh, you know, would be the flywheel. Uh, the first back cylinder is going to be your number three, and then you got your number one. We're installing them with the tangs down. And the tangs on these match so we're gonna have them down um, on a stock crank it would be I'm sorry a stock um, rod in it would be with the bumps up so your bump would be right here and with this one specifically it came with some ARP uh, I assume it's 
like anti-seize, but assembly lube for the bolts. Come on. I wouldn't get crazy with it, but you know, obviously put some on there. Uh, these have all been balanced, so I'd make sure that you kept, you know, the bolts that came off of, uh, you know, just keep them together, keep them as a set when you take them apart to clean them and put the uh, bearings. Um, I'm not going to put uh, thread locker on them yet. I was going to put a dab on the bottom. Uh, I got to check the clearances before I do that. Now we're going to torque them down. Uh, regardless if we got to take them back off, I'm going to torque them down. Um, for this manufacturer, it's calling for 15, 20, 25, and then 29. So I'm going to go with that order. All right, so I've torqued all of them uh, according to the manufacturer's instructions. Um, and now I'm going to uh, put my other bearing on. I want to test fit and everything. But I've already got it marked and everything where the dial pin is, where it should be sitting. Put a little assembly fluid on there. Uh, but it should go this way towards the flywheel. The uh, dial pin should be closer to the flywheel. Put that on. And it's going to be a little off. Dial faces the flywheel. All right, so don't forget like I did, uh, make sure you put this on, bell side out, and then install the key before you install the crank. It's not the end of the world. You know, I had to bolt everything down. That would have been a lot worse. But uh, yeah, 